it's Levon. Welcome back to my channel and to Step by Step. Obviously I'm being a little silly and did a poorly photoshopped picture of me wearing one of my new merchandise t-shirts because I haven't gotten the real thing yet and of course a mask because everybody is wearing that. But stay tuned to the end of the video for details on how you can win a t-shirt. So when I laugh, last left you, I was doing the drawers and everything for the kitty sanctuary, uh, the curbside find that we were making over for a place for the cat. So here you can see I put the cutout of the cat's head on the side. And now um, I'm using my jigsaw. I had taken uh, the drill and made some fairly large holes with a large bit and that makes it so much easier to cut with the jigsaw. So a jigsaw is meant to cut curved lines. So you can see how it easily moves around those curves. So pardon my porch, still haven't gotten it cleaned off yet. Pennsylvania winters, you know, just uh, working from home so have to use the uh, wherever I can. <laughs> So um, I continue to cut, like I said, the holes just make it so much easier. You're going to love this, it's such a cute little thing. Uh, the, the whole idea of the cabinet was to keep the cat safe from the dogs uh, while she was eating, So, because the dogs tend to eat her food. So I'm anxious to see it in my client's home. So there's the rest of the cutout. So if you ever have a situation where you need to um, just do a little bit of smoothing of some rough spots and you don't have sandpaper handy, an emery board will do the trick, especially if it's not a big job. In this situation, it was actually just perfect because it really left a smooth line. And yes, I've been known to take sandpapers to, root, to smooth a rough fingernail as well. You can see all the cutouts that just fell into the bottom of the cabinet, all those sections. Nice and smooth. Okay, and there were some spots that needed roughed out, some texture and a little chunk missing. So I used Dixie Bell Mud and made that all smooth before I used Slick Stick on the rest of the piece to give it some tooth. And remember I used slick stick on the mirror and made that into a chalkboard. So here I've primed the chalkboard simply by taking a piece of chalk and rubbing it on its side until the board's completely covered and then you erase that and your board is ready to write on. So there's the cutout still doing a little painting on there and back to the door to do some waxing. So after I used clear wax so there's the completed project, and I think it turned out great. Um, so there's some details on the side. The little cup uh, pull that's upside down is meant to hold chalk. And then there's a little hook for a leash. It's the kitty sanctuary, and kitty seems to be pretty content because we got a picture afterwards, um, and you'll see that in a moment. But the uh, inside is really easy to keep clean. And it's a handsome piece of furniture. So the uh, couple ended up using it in their dining room. And there's Kitty, and she is very content. <laughs> you can tell immediately she took to it. So remember, that's how it started. It's a curbside find, and literally was kind of in bad shape, but just needed a few repairs. It was actually in decent shape, but just needed a few little love. <laughs> so meanwhile, last week, I was also working on the, the chairs. So I had one chair left to go, so I hurried up and painted it. Now actually, obviously I sped up the film on this, but I took my time painting this one. I actually relished painting the details on this. I used driftwood paint uh, from Dixie Belle, and I used the French tip brush, which made the experience so enjoyable to paint with. So if you're interested in Dixie Belle products, the link is uh, in the description box below. And now I'm using um, black wax, and I really waxed hard because it was a rough day and I broke my brush. So um, then I turned my attention to the, the chairs, 
recovering the chairs, so I used foam, batting, and of course the fabric. So I have them all layered there, and I laid the seat down on the, the foam, and that's what I'm using to um, cover the surface. So I traced an inch around the chair and then cut around. Um, I guess I did that after <laughs> I did the webbing. So the webbing, you just do your strips across and make them very taut, um, and then you do uh, weave in and out in the opposite direction, and that gives it a lot more stability. And I just used a staple gun for this. So it's all new upholstery. And there we are, tracing around the outside, just making an inch so there's just enough to cover over the corners. And then I begin stapling. You uh, staple close into the corners when you get there, and then when you get to the the corner you just pull it taut and put a couple staples in there and then trim the excess. There's how it turned out and you'll see it a minute uh, in a minute on the chair. There it is and I can't wait till next week till I can show you a better picture of all the chairs finished and with the china closet. It will be a while till you see it in the customer's home when she shares a photo. But there's some close-up detail. I just absolutely love the details. So I'd love for you to comment and tell me what you're working on. And uh, again, there's more details and you're really gonna wanna comment because remember in the beginning, I told you that you could win a t-shirt. So um, it, what you have to do to win is to subscribe and then to comment right here on YouTube. So once you do that, you'll be entered in a drawing and then you'll get to pick your size and style of t-shirt. I want to thank you so much for watching and please come back and watch us every Saturday and in between whenever we have a video, but Step by Step is on Saturdays at 4. And also visit on LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram, more Levintage Decor and on Facebook, La Vintage Decor Altoona. Stay well.